Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our old school first person shooter tutorial series. Now we've got our tile map environment that we can go ahead and create as many levels as we want to. The next thing we need to do is create some doors for us to block off rooms and add a little bit of extra to our game. So for that, first thing I'm going to do is create a door object. So I'm going to grab my cube model from the assets folder. I'm going to click and drag this into our scene. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's switch back to our 3D view so I can see what's going on correctly. And as we've done before, we want to make sure we have this have the correct rotation. So we'll put this rotation back to zero. And then I'm going to create a holder object first, which we'll call the door. And then click and drag this into here. Then back up here on our 2D view, I'm going to give this a box collider. 2D, which is going to act as sort of the activation zone of our door. So when we approach the door, when we enter this area, this is going to be where the player uh, determines whether the door should open, basically. So I'm going to make that a trigger, because we obviously don't want it to be a solid object. I'm going to increase the size of it to be 2 by 2. So now I'm just going to actually switch back to this view so we can see roughly where it will be. You can see the outline of it is down along here. Actually our cube is one up too high there. On the y-axis that should be zero. There we go. Centered properly now. And then I'm also going to right click and create an empty object which we're going to call collider. Oh, didn't spell collider properly. And this is going to act as the physical object that stops our player when they come up against it. So if we have, if you've set this door to take a couple of seconds to open, which is what we're going to do. You don't want your player to be able to run through the door while it's opening. We want to wait till the door is gone. And with that in mind, we're going to make a physical object that stops the player moving through until it's correct the correct time. So we're going to add a box collider 2D to this as well, but we're not going to make this uh, a trigger. We're going to leave this solid. And this is, by default, it'll be one by one. So it'll be the correct size of our box here. Okay. So then with that in mind, obviously what we need to do is make it so that we can activate this door. Now I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to move it over to roughly here uh, so we can interact with it. Actually, just before we write the script, we should probably make it look like a door. So I'm going to go to my uh, materials folder. I'm going to duplicate this wall again. I'm going to rename this to be the door material. Then I'm going to go to select my assets and I'm going to select the door sprite that we created, or sorry, that, we, that is included with the project. So I can double click on that. And then back on the door itself, I can drag that material onto here, onto both sides. And so now we have this door looking object. And I'm also going to make this door a prefab because we we'll want to use it a bit later. So I'm going to put it in my environment folder and pop it in there like that. Okay, so that's done now. So. Let's go ahead and create a script that we can use to control our player opening this door. Very, very simple. So we're going to create a C sharp script that we'll call door. And we're going to let that compile for a second. I'm going to attach that to my door object. Then we're going to open this up in Visual Studio. So with this, we're going to want a couple of very simple things uh, as reference up the top. So we're obviously going to need to know the position of the actual visible object itself because we're going to make that door slide open and closed. And how we'll do that is by using a public transform so we can get the position of the object that we'll call door model. Then we're obviously also going to need to be able to activate and deactivate that collider that is stopping the player going through the door too quickly. So we're going to say public game object. We'll call this the collider object, so call object. And then we we'll need to know how fast we want our door to open. So we're going to create public float open speed. Okay, so those are our basic variables for now. The next thing we need to know is how are we going to determine when the player should open the door? Well, we're going to set it so that when the door, 
oh, sorry, when the player approaches the door, we're going to tell it to open. So the way we can check if the player enters a trigger area, because we know if we go back to our door, we know we have the door here. So we can we want to check if he enters the area here, which we set up as a trigger. What we can use is back on our player, we can check and see if the tag, uh, sorry, if the object with the tag player has entered this area because we don't want this to open if enemies walk into the area or anything like that. So we'll check if that's true and if that is true then we'll make this slide down. So go back in here and what we're going to do is do a void on trigger enter 2d. So we're checking if we enter the trigger area. What we're looking for is the other collider that we that it entered this area and then we're going to check on that other collider if the other dot tag equals player so what do we want to happen then well obviously we want to say hey if the player has entered this area well then tell the door model to start opening so what we're going to do is use a private sorry that should be private bool that we'll call should open and we're going to say when the player enters the trigger area should open equals true and then we're also going to say I'm going to copy this to say on trigger exit should open is false. So when the player leaves the door area, we shouldn't open. And when we the player enters the trigger area, we should open. Okay, so then in our update loop, we need to determine what should happen when either of those is true. So if should open is true, well then we need to make our door move. Now how can we make our door move? Well, if we go back in here and look at our door here, uh, while we're here, let's set up these uh, variables. I'm going to set my open speed to be 2. I'm going to grab the model into the door model slot and the collider into the collider object slot. And then what we want to happen is basically get our cube here and make this move into the ground. So it just disappears down into the ground when we place it. And that's perfectly fine. We want, But how can we know when that's happening? Well, if we click and drag this, we can see on our z-axis it's going to 1. It's starting off at 0. 0 means it's at the correct point, but then when we go down to 1, it's down below the ground and we can no longer see it. So what we can do is, back in our script, say we want to move the door models door model dot position equals vector tree dot move towards so we want to tell it to move towards a particular value door model sorry we're moving from door model dot position so we're moving from wherever our door currently is on this update frame we want to tell it where we want it to go to well that's going to be a new vector tree we don't want to change the x-axis position so it'll be door model dot position dot x we don't want to change the y position, so door model dot position dot y. Uh, the, but the value that we do want to change is the z position. We want to set it to go towards 1. So that's the position we want to go to. And then we need to tell how fast we want this to happen. Well, we know we set up the open speed, so we'll say open speed multiplied by time dot delta time to make sure that it's consistent and smooth for different systems based on your frame rate. Okay, so let's just test this out to make sure that this works uh, before we do the opposite. So I'm going to go back into Unity, let it compile. And if I go press play now, we should see when I run over to the door, it disappeared into the ground. So our door is gone. Perfect. But of course, at the moment, if I try and walk over it, uh oh, our collider is stopping us. Now our collider 
stops the player obviously but also serves the purpose of stopping enemies follow, follow, following after the player so we don't want to just have no colliders on our doors or anything like that but what we do want to do is we're going to say here if we should open we're going to do all this but we're also going to check if we should open and uh, door model dot position dot z is not equal to one so we're basically saying only do this as long as we're not already at one and then within this loop we're going to do an extra check to say if door model dot position dot z equals one well if it is exactly at one which is what we're trying to move towards here well then what we want to check do is say okay at that point set the collider object set active false okay so we now have our collider object happening here our, our collider object sorry being the being removed here so let's check this and make sure this is working so I'm gonna go here and play and now there we go you can see I got stuck for a second while the door was opening and then once it opened the collider disappeared so we could escape out of our little area so that's all fine and dandy but then what about when we want to close it well let's go back up here and we're going to say so if we should open and the door model is not a one then we're going to do all this but here we're going to say else if not should open and we're going to do the opposite here now so we're going to say door model dot position is not equal to zero because we're going to make the door move back towards zero oops i dropped down there for a second there we go then we're going to do basically the same bit of code as we have here i'm going to copy this and paste it in but this time instead of moving to one we're moving to zero and we're doing the check to see if we're at zero and here we're setting the collider to be active again uh, should, sorry, that should be position dot Z. There we go. Okay, so we'll save this. We'll go back in to Unity, let it compile again. And now, when I press play, you should see we can run up to the door. It opens. When we walk away, it disappears. Or sorry, it disappears. It reappears. So perfect. Our door is now working the way we want it to. But of course, we also want to be able to place this door in our scene. So. Let's make sure I apply all the changes I made to the prefab. Then I'm going to delete the, so delete the door. Then I'm going to go back to my tiles. I'm going to create a new tiles rule tile. And this is going to be our door tile. For my sprites, I'm going to select the door sprite for the game object. I'm going to select the door game object. No collider by default. Then I'm going to go to my tile palette. And I'm going to click and drag this into here and then switch this back to 2D and I can place some doors in and out of room. So let's pop one. Oh, no, I don't want to put it on the ceiling. I want to put it on the tile map. So I'm going to, there we go, pop that there, 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 there. It's basically at all these little entrances that we have for each room. Uh, I just want to make sure that my ceiling tile map didn't retain that object. I'm going to deactivate this, turn my ceiling back on. No. Okay, so that'll, that'll disappear in a moment uh, when I play the game. Let's just play the game, make sure this is... Yeah, there we go. That disappeared the way it should. Okay. Sometimes sometimes the time apps don't <clears throat> always update the prefab straight away, but usually if you play and stop the game, it'll refresh the time map, essentially. Uh, so I can just turn this back on. And now we have our time map with all these various areas. If I go ahead and play now, see, a little door opens. We also have a little graphic on the ground. So you can switch this out to be a different graphic if you wanted to, to represent the doors. But now we have all our rooms being blocked off. I can shoot this guy. When I walk through here, we can grab these med packs. Um, now, it's something I like is forcing the player to wait for a second and have a think before the doors open. But if you would prefer not to have that happen and you prefer it so that the player could immediately just run through the door, well, there's a couple of things you could do. You, you could 
Uh, well, obviously, you could just remove the colliders altogether if you wanted to, but then your enemies will be able to wander through those doors. But what you could also do is simply say on the on trigger enters down here. At this point, you could just say, when we enter the trigger area, deactivate the collider. And when we exit the trigger area, reactivate it. So just an example of how that will work. Go back in here, and now if I play, now I can just run through these doors. But you don't really get the feeling of, hey, this door is opening, we wait for the door to open and stuff like that. It's kind of not as much fun, not as much of an interaction with that for the player. So I prefer to just leave it the other way. But again, it's all down to personal preference and how you feel about your game. So we're almost done with creating this little game. Uh, kind of the main thing left is to design levels and design different interactions, design different enemies that will attack at different speeds and different ranges and things like that. But one other very important core element that's missing to really feeling like this could be a uh, actual working game is sound. So we're going to take a looking look at adding sound and music into our game to make it feel a bit more uh, alive and realistic in the next video. So I will be back soon with more gaming tutorial goodness. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, follow on Twitter, follow on Twitch, all the cool places. Come hang out and be cool very soon.